Hi, this is James Wan. It's James, a wine guy, here to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is sherry or vino jerez. This wine is amazing, and it's an amazing wine that I keep thinking about. I, it's a wine of fascination for me because I think that this wine is something that, and other people have said this as well, which is the, the fear that sherry would go away. And I think that is has been a concern because of um, year over year, it has decreased in terms of its consumption, which is a, is a sad thing because it is one of the most amazing wine stories and it's a very difficult wine to make. So if you're going to be a winemaker, you probably wouldn't want to start off as being a sherry winemaker or a champagne winemaker or a sparkling winemaker. And I bring these two examples together and it's been compared as well by other people. And that is say, for example, champagne has a very similar dry, um, you know, it's extremely white soil. It's almost, there's no nutrient. And, um, you know, you have a cool land and, and to um, uh, Jerez de la Frontera on the southern end of Spain, a very warm, hot um, experience. And that is something that is not doable for a vintage year over year. And that's pretty well known, except in Champagne, you do have a declared vintage occasionally by some producers, but not all the time. Maybe it's two a decade or so. Maybe it's less. Maybe it's none. Um, maybe it's one every um, 20 years. But there are, you know probably a larger number of vintages per decade. Now, in, in the um, sherry world, that doesn't occur. And um, this wine is best served and best created when it is actually completed as a wine that has been blended. And blending is a fantastic thing for this experienced wine. And uh, one that I just look to as something that is just a fantastic experience. You go from something that's extremely, what I would call life altering dry, all the way to a wine that is extremely sweet and uh, uh, so uh, no near tooth achingly sweet. And this wine is something that is just, there's several styles. And I think that um, sherry, say like Zinfandel, has had its challenges with say the white Zinfandel for Zinfandel and uh, cooking sherry for sherry. Um, you know, what I would say is that white Zinfandel is not Zinfandel and cooking sherry is not sherry. Sherry is sherry. And that is an important distinction because this is made with um, Palomino grapes, except for the Pedro Jimenez. So that wine is, um, so it's the, the namesake of the wine style is also the name of the grape. Now, this is a fortified wine. They're in probably anywhere in the 16, 17, all the way up to 20, 21% range. And that's what helps to, you know, keep this wine going for years and years and years. So you have a Solera system. So the Solera system is something that, um, is helps to create this wine and uh, basically it starts off with the say the um, and you have different uh, num or numbers you have the criadera um, uh, three two one and you actually you, you take the content you actually drain from the first um, the bottom of the barrels you take that out and 30 percent no more can be taken out it's against the law so then you would just actually feed downward so three to two to one and the nursery feeding is what creates this, you know, amazing wine. So what you'll do is, you know, you have four basic dryer styles. And that's a manzanillo, uh, manzanilla, excuse me, fino, amantillado, palo cortado, and three sweeter styles, which are oloroso, cream, and Pedro Jimenez. Now, when you have the sweeter styles, I'll just back up and say, you have the Pedro Jimenez, which is when, this one here. And it's combined with the um, Oloroso, and that wine becomes a cream sherry, which we have here. And even on the bottle, it says that itself. It says this was elaborado con Oloroso, Oloroso y Pedro Jimenez. So it's a combination of. Now, when you go to the drier styles, I would not recommend going to the driest style. I would probably go to uh, Palo Cortado is not as easily found as, say, an Amontillado. You can go to your wine merchant and ask for that specifically. And it's an aperitif wine, in my opinion. I'm going to serve this uh, before serving a meal. And, um, you know, it depends on the style of wine. Some people will serve, say, the cream sherry with a bit of ice. I, I don't do that. Some people will serve Pedro Jimenez with ice cream, which I don't do because I don't think it should be known as a ice cream wine only. That would be a shame. So it's a fantastic experience. And when I think of one of my favorite fictional characters, James Bond, um, in a meeting at um, in, in Whitehall is saying, um, you know, he's given a glass of sherry and, you know, identifies a Solera and, um, you know, M or Q or someone says, um, 
Vaughn, you know, Sherry has no vintage, and Vaughn quips out, um, of course not, I'm referring to the um, Solera that it's uh, derived from, so, and, um, you know, it was a Bond smackdown, great moment, love it too, so I love wine, love Bond, and um, love um, uh, Sherry, Vinyl hit it. So it's a fantastic one. I'll do a separate video for this wine, which I haven't done before, and it's uh, Morenita. So we'll do that one next. So for more reviews, please go to jameswineguy.com. Please subscribe to my videos on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Vimeo. Salud.